Posting a Complete Accounting Cycle, Part 2. We continue the posting of all the transactions in a complete accounting cycle that we began in a previous lesson. We are posting all the transactions of Joe's business, a shop founded by Joe. We already treated 10 transactions in the previous lessons. There remains 9 transactions to post. So we shall start with transaction number 11. Transaction number 11, we send a check to Deirdre, the supplier of goods, for 1,500 euros. Actually, we owe Deirdre 4,000 euros. So this is a partial payment to Deirdre. This is usually done in order to show goodwill in business relationships and more specifically to buy more from Deirdre. But at any rate, we uh, send Deirdre 1,500, so it's a debit in Deirdre's account, which is a creditor's account if you prefer, and the bank, bank account is credited 1,500 euros. Then let's go to transaction 12. Precisely, in transaction 12, we buy more goods on credit from Deirdre for 3,000 euros. So the purchases account is debited 3,000 euros. And I remind you that 3,000 euros is for uh, items that cost four, 40 euros a piece. So 3,000 divided by 40, that means 75 items here that we buy from Deirdre. Uh, that's the purchases account that is debited and Deirdre's account is credited a further 3,000 euros. So we can say that the balance of Deirdre's account, which is all these numbers minus all these numbers, in this case, we always start with the bigger column, 7,000 minus 1,500, that means that Deirdre's account has a balance of 5,500 euros in credit. Transaction 13, a cash sales this time, 3,000 euros. So we receive cash, the cash account is debited 3,000 euros. And mind you, these items are sold by us at 100 euros a piece. So this is 30 items that leave the inventory and go to a client. And what's nice here also, it's important to note, is that there's no need to record to whom we grant credit. The money goes directly into the cash account and you don't write the name of a client on bank notes or that uh, you receive. You do that only on IOUs. And uh, to complete this transaction, we saw that the sales account is credited, well, the amount that is 3,000. So we already sold for 6,000. Uh, euros worth of goods. Transaction 14, another cash sale, 1,000 euros. Well, there again, the cash account uh, is debited 1,000 euros. Uh, that's for 10 uh, items, by the way. And uh, the balance of this cash account is computed here by taking the bigger uh, column minus the smaller column. So here we have 16,000 minus 10,000. So we say that the cash account is 6,000 euros in debit. Can you see why a cash account can never be in credit? Well, let's leave that as an exercise for you. And the sales account, as usual, is credited the amount of the sale that is 1,000 euros. Transaction 15. Here we purchase machinery on credit from James, 5,000 euros. So a uh, machinery account is debited 5,000 euros. By the way, do we have the money at the bank to pay him by check later on? Well, let's look at our bank account. That's what double entry accounting is designed for in particular. Well, we can see that the, the bank account uh, is this. So we have in debit 10,000 and in credit we have 2,500, 3, 4 and 3, 7. So altogether we have only at the bank 3,000 euros in debit necessarily. 
Anyway, we pay James with an AOU, so we don't care about what we have at the bank. But later on, we shall pay James with a check, so we better have the money at the bank. And so now, James' account is credited 5,000 euros. Transaction 16. Joe gets a long-term loan from a bank, a long-term bank loan, 2,000 euros. And the money is arriving directly uh, into the bank account. That is, the bank account is debited, these 2,000 euros. Here it is. And now we have at the bank 5,000, since we had uh, just before 3,000. And the other leg of this transaction number 16, we credit a long-term bank loan account, 2000 it's a new liability of Joe's shop, and this loan will cost interest charges every year, but we shall not take care of that in this accounting cycle. Assume that the interest charges begin next year. And on top of that, we have to refund this capital according to a certain schedule that is not specified here. Transaction number 17. The shop pays Jem, James by check 5,000 euros. So the bank account is credited 5,000 euros. And uh, we may note that this is exactly the money we had at the bank. The, the loan, we got exactly enough to pay James by check with the loan. And uh, James' account is debited 5,000 euros. That is, this settles uh, what we say it settles James' account. So we no longer owe any money to James. And by the way, if we had paid James for some reason more than 5,000 euros, James would become a debtor owing us money. But here, it's just settled. Transaction number 18. We take 5,000 euros of cash to the bank. So we are familiar with this uh, uh, type of transaction. The bank receives 5,000 euros. And the cash account, which had way more, uh, gives uh, 5,000 euros. Transaction 19, that's the last one of this, uh, uh, well, representative uh, accounting cycle, but only with 19 transactions. The shop pays 2,500 euros of salaries by check. So we debit a salaries account. 2,500 euros, and this records work coming in, work that came in. This is work that came in, and at the same time, we credit the bank account, 2,500 euros, and that's the recording of the money that leaves. In other words, a salaries account, which is debited, records work and the money itself is recorded in whichever account is used to pay, even though the figures, of course, are the same. So this is, finishes up the posting of all the transactions of this uh, small accounting cycle. In the next lesson, we shall first of all compute the balance of each account and learn a little more about the technique of uh, computing balances, but uh, as you can see, it's not particularly mysterious. And we shall prepare, therefore, a, a document called the trial balance. It's simply enough, the list of balances of all the accounts. Before finishing this lesson, let's take a look at the inventory of goods. Uh, even though this is something that is taken care of in the year-end adjustments. So we saw that uh, we uh, purchased, first of all, 100 items. Then we sold 30 items. Then we, so we were left with 70. We purchased a further 75 items. So we had temporarily 145 items. We sold another 30 items. The inventory went down to 115. We sold another 10. These two were cash sales. So we have an ending inventory of goods on premises of 105 items. Total purchases 175, total sales 70. This is in number of items.